Thank you. I um, would like to make a short introduction to this uh, discussion today. Uh, we are going to uh, discuss the challenges within offshore wind uh, for the deeper water, especially when we go deep, uh, when we have uh, larger turbines. And uh, I'm going to discuss that uh, with uh, Ole Bikum Nielsen from uh, Vattenfall, which is uh, have been his, he has a lot of experience from uh, offshore projects in the UK and other places and uh, have therefore a good background from the utility uh, and the developer side. The industry uh, today is uh, going into uh, deeper water. And uh, there are more uh, reasons for that. If you look at the UK today, we have had uh, round one, we have had uh, round two, we now have round two and a half, and we are going to have uh, round three. They are, it's a question about scale, it's a question about uh, getting away from uh, shipping routes, it's a get question about getting into more stable and better wind site areas and uh, but all, of course, add up to more challenges uh, for the industry compared to the ones we have seen so far. And um, you see that we can we can better make uh, uh, larger wind parks and, and sites. Uh, offshore means that is a, a power plant we can build uh, when we go deeper because there's more space to do it. Much more space and also <clears throat> this about that it's, it's going to be a plant. It's not going to be a lot of single turbines really will make a huge difference uh, looking forward and also I think that it's going to be important for the wind industry in general that we actually deliver power plants not just single turbines. First of all it's a question about the larger scale of our offshore wind farms and uh, it's also a question about uh, getting more and better uh, wind conditions. At the same time it is of course also increasing the challenges uh, doing the uh, projects offshore and also after having done the projects, then the O&M phase that uh, is to be followed. Yes, I think that the, the question is really going deep. How deep can we go and how deep uh, will, uh, will will it be? Um, we have in the, in the last year seen wind parks going from, we started on 10, 15 meters of water and now we are on 25, 30 meters of water and even seen one or two sites in Germany where we are above uh, 30 meters of water. So the question is really uh, how, how deep we can go. Uh, in my mind, uh, that, that, that uh, is, is just a, I don't think it's a pure cost benefit, but, but it is of course a cost benefit because uh, First of all, uh, the turbines have to be bigger. You have to produce more per unit because mm. it will definitely be, in my mind, more expensive to install each unit. Mm. But as the unit is the double size of what we see in average today, then uh, we can all uh, try and, and we have to achieve a, a lower cost price per megawatt mm. installed uh, also on deeper water. Mm. Uh, what do you think is the three main, the main challenges and the main things we have to concentrate on to get this efficient for the future? I think uh, absolutely one of the main uh, challenges at the moment is that uh, it is, uh, it's costly, it's expensive to produce uh, electricity from uh, offshore wind farms. And uh, I think the, our business in general has really a, a big job in front of us uh, to uh, lower these uh, costs and uh, it's it's not uh, only a cost a question about lower the cost of uh, the capex cost the uh, installation cost and the o m uh, costs uh, but of course it's a question about lowering the cost of uh, produced energy but i'm uh, i'm actually positive about that because i think that uh, we know uh, where to look into this and uh, i'm uh, I have a good feeling about that uh, within the next uh, three, four years, we will uh, succeed in, in this area. And, and I also think it's needed because we have to do it. We have to uh, convince, you know, uh, our stakeholders in general about that it can be done cheaper than uh, we do it uh, today. Then another uh, challenge is that uh, we still in our business uh, see or meet some technical problems, uh, not 
that much any longer technical problems with our turbines because I think they are doing in, in general. The technique are pretty good today. Of course, it can still be done better. But uh, if we take uh, offshore cable installation, that's certainly an area where there are room for some improvements. Uh, just ask the insurance companies uh, mm. from where they get the claims. And, and the main part of all claims are related to, to cable installation. So uh, I think that's uh, one of the areas also where we have to do better. You say the quality has come up, and I think that that's definitely sure. We are one of those who have had some repair work and and, and some mm. maintenance, and mm. that's going down, and the business <laughs> is slow at the moment. So, so that that's definitely for sure. So the turbines are, have a much better quality, um, and I think installation of turbines mm. uh, that we can do. Uh, but I'm I'm more the challenge will be the installation of the foundations, yeah. and I think there will be challenges to bring the cost of the foundations down uh, to get this efficient. Mm. And then uh, you're fully right that the, the next one is the cables. Mm. Um, we have seen uh, too many troubles in, in, in laying cables. It it seems that in the beginning in this industry it was that what was below the water, uh, we couldn't see it and that was nice. And yeah. Then we discovered that there were some cables laying down there and they were probably not always laid what where we believed them to be mm. and um, there, there's a lot of challenge in, in, in bringing that quality up. Exactly. Which I think is, is one of the big challenges really really try to look at the foundation side because if, if, if we if we look a little bit backwards we have seen yes gravity foundations very heavy uh, can be placed on low water depths and and they will be difficult eventually to use on, on deeper water and then we have seen monopile structures and we know at a certain level we come to the maximum size of a monopile mm. we thought it was eventually 20 25 meters and now I think it's a bit more yeah. and they get bigger uh, but but at a certain time, uh, there, there, there will be a, a, also a limitation for the sizes of the monopiles. So we have, we have to look at other kind of, mm. of, of structures mm. uh, for these uh, new large turbines mm. uh, in deeper water. Mm. Do, do, we, do we have that? I think we, we need, uh, there's a lot of uh, in, in, in inventions going on and a lot of developments going on for, for new foundations. Uh, but but probably we haven't really seen uh, which trend you placed in Ormond 30 jackets uh, is the jacket installation and the method of installation jackets on deeper water. Um, when we go 10 meters deeper, it means about 40, 45 is the, then the jackets, which are the most cost efficient, or, or do we think there are other uh, type of foundations? I think uh, at the moment the tendency in the market is that uh, going on deeper water, it is uh, jackets uh, more or less all uh, have in mind. I uh, agree with you. I think that uh, it needs some uh, further investigations and uh, possible there could uh, be other solutions. I know this about the gravity-based uh, foundations, concrete foundations uh, so far, with a few exceptions, only have been used on shallow water. Mm. Um, personally, I think that uh, it uh, there may be our possibilities also on, on deeper water. We have a couple of examples uh, of that and uh, I think it can be further investigated. And, and also I think it could end up that way that it will be part of the overall aim to get reduced uh, the capex of, uh, of doing offshore uh, projects. But talking about uh, large um, gravity bound based uh, foundations it will also put another challenge to the uh, installation yes, vessels yes. because how do you handle such a, mm. a big uh, unit quite oh, heavy that's right and and, the, and 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 right now you can only handle it uh, by having those uh, large floating cranes because yeah. that's the only thing which can lift yeah. eventually two three thousand tons of, of, of concrete and um, and and those vessels we all know from the oil and gas industry, you can you can only use them in in uh, uh, calm sea means eventually one two meter waves and when do we have one to two meter waves in yeah. the mid of the North Sea? Mm. Uh, probably only mid mid summer. So so yeah. that's not the ideal no. solution. No, it's not. 
And but, I was, I, but I think also that that this industry that we really need to to get uh, the industrialization of these uh, foundations, mm. because we, we can't learn. We can learn from the oil and gas. We can see the jackets. We know how they are. They are. They are installed. Uh, we more or less know how they are built. But that's one, two, three mm. at a time. And now mm. we have to build hundreds of mm. jackets. Mm. So there have to be a cost saving and industrialization of the production of the jackets. Yeah. Um, and, and, and then, of course, the installation of the jackets yeah. also. Yeah. As we are going into deeper water, of course, we have to look at, uh, at new uh, options uh, to do our foundations. And uh, one of them could be uh, floating uh, foundations, uh, which is uh, still, I think, uh, in a very early uh, state. I know there's a couple of uh, projects uh, here in Europe where we have floating uh, foundations. And we do gain experience from uh, from these uh, projects. Uh, whether that's gonna be uh, the solution uh, long term, I think that's uh, still an open question. And and also, where where can you use a floating foundation? Because uh, is uh, 60 meter is that deep water when talking about floating foundations? Or do we then have to move to maybe 100 meter water or more? to use the type of floating foundations we have in the market today, or at least uh, on some test uh, sites. So I, I, I'm, I'm personally not convinced about that floating foundations will be the solution, but, but we don't know. That's right. I, I, I agree that we have seen uh, some developments in floating foundations, mm. but there are definitely a lot of challenges which yeah. have to be overcome, especially uh, that um, how to, to control all the cables yeah. and the cable laying because now we don't have the cable buried in the seabed. Now we have cables hanging yeah. because they are floating. Mm -hmm. So so that, that, is, that is definitely one of the big questions, how, how that can be solved. We know from offshore that, that, it, that it can be, offshore oil and gas, that it can be, uh, be solved. Uh, uh, but but um, I think the payback on a production facility and the oil and gas is a bit better than this on a and uh, offshore wind turbines, so, uh, so, so that, that we have to overcome. I think when we are talking floating, um, uh, then the question is, do we get some foundations uh, which we eventually could float out? Mm. Uh, because then we don't need that much space on the installation vessels. Mm. Or the installation technology could change, so mm. we eventually don't need the big vessels. Mm. So if we could float some of these t uh, foundations out and uh, kind of upend them in the water and place them on the seabed, yeah. that would definitely, uh, in, a, in, in, in our view, uh, cut, the, cut the installation cost down on the foundation installation. And that is actually what we have done with the monopiles uh, at a couple of uh, projects. Yes, yeah, uh, we have been floated out uh, the monopiles, uh, which means that uh, you don't need the vessel to uh, transport. Uh, you can just uh, have them in the water. Yeah. Looking especially at some of the wind farms uh, near the UK coast, we all know that the seabed is difficult. Yeah. And I think we even could see some foundations which will be different within a wind farm. Yeah. Saying in that area it's it's sand and mm. it's clay or mm. it's mm. Uh, it's soft uh, ground, then we could eventually see different foundations from one end of the wind farm because the wind farm gets that big. So it's really from one end of London to the other end of London. It is. And you probably don't have the same ground uh, all over the place. It is. And uh, already now at our EA project, we uh, are looking into, uh, you know, uh, different options and uh, part of the uh, project where we most likely will use monopiles, but other parts, and that's maybe the main part, where we will use other types of uh, foundations because of, uh, first of all, variations into the uh, water, the depths, but also the soil conditions. And another challenge there is uh, 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 sand waves, which we uh, actually see quite a lot of uh, in the North Sea and uh, we have areas where we have uh, sand waves up till 7-8 uh, meter and that is quite a lot and uh, that's certainly something you have to take into account when you are yeah. <laughs> doing the design of the foundation. We as an mm. installation contractor we, we have to look at the installation technology. Mm. Mm. 
today uh, there have been a lot of discussion of either post piling or pin piling yeah. means do the pile first and then install the jacket um, and and right now it seems that uh, most people like uh, to have the four piles uh, put in um, the seabed first and mm. then install the jacket mm. uh, because the jacket can't stay yeah. there for a long time if yeah. you don't uh, pile it yeah. and uh, but that is also a technology yeah. if the jacket gets bigger uh, it's still a, a lot more installation time and technology you have to use to install a jacket than it is for 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 a monopile so so of course you will also there get into a picture of more cost per installed jacket mm. which can only be paid back by the power produced later yeah. on yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. it's uh, for for my company it's of course a question about mm. trying to reduce uh, offshore works as much as possible and uh, then again uh, offshore installation is, is part of that and uh, the question is how do you uh, how do you see installation of uh, just take uh, foundations as one example it could be turbines also is a feeder system a possible way forward or how do you do it it's it's uh, it, it could be nice just to uh, have the installation vessel you know going from from location to location mm. and, and just putting the units in place and then move on both yes and no i think we we, we have tried to to look at that and and uh it, it's obvious that could you have the um, the most expensive vessel just being on mm. site mm. and moving from one location to the next and do the installation mm. and then get it feed it. Mm. But 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 uh, when looking at it, yes, the feeding, the transfer of the foundation from one vessel to the other or just to lift it mm. and place it mm. has to be done in two, two and a half meter significant wave height. Yes. And that means waves up to four or five meters in, mm. in the height. Mm. And, 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 and that just tells how, uh, yeah. I think, challenging yeah. Yeah, and yeah. difficult it yeah. would be. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. We, we look more into a system where, where eventually you do uh, the installation of the, the piles, you uh, drive into the seabed, and then do the installation of the jacket with a different vessel. Yeah. So, so you, you combine and say, okay, mm. you specialize the vessel mm. for the operation you have to do. Mm. Mm. And then eventually, as, as, as it is right now, you have to grout the jacket, the connection between the pins and, and the jacket, and you, you have to grout it to, to stabilize it and, and, and to be stable. And that could eventually also be done by uh, another vessel. So, so you should look more at flexible vessels, I think, and different vessels. Yeah, and I think the conclusion is that uh, what we should aim for as an <coughs> industry is actually to make uh, best use of uh, the vessels, uh, meaning maybe purpose uh, build uh, vessels. Uh, and uh, the way the sequence you just described it is actually the way we did it at Ormond. Uh, one vessel to do a uh, piling and other to install the jacket, mm -hmm. and then a third one coming and, and doing uh, the grouting. Yeah. Another area maybe to look into is, uh, per tradition, it has been that way that uh, you have the foundation and then on top of the foundation you have the tower. There has always uh, been that uh, split and uh, there are historical reasons for that. Maybe it's not optimal for the industry. Maybe we have to uh, remove that uh, split and uh, maybe look at it as uh, one unit. And it could, mm -hmm. of course, maybe create more challenges for the uh, for, for your industry talking about installation, but it maybe could uh, be part of uh, the aim of uh, reducing the total costs uh, because you integrate the uh, tower and uh, foundation in one unit. Yeah, yeah. That, that, is, uh, that I think is, is one way eventually to, mm. to, to look at it. And uh, you could integrate the full tower in the, in the, in the foundation. Mm. and then uh, only install the nacelle and the blades, which are the critical mm. and the most important, of course, elements to produce power. Yeah. The tower is just a, a way of getting it up in the wind or at least to transport the power to the, to the ground. Exactly, so, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, but it's also interesting to see that that will also um, give questions to installation vessels. Yeah. Because I think that uh, those installation vessels, which are... Coming into the market, the next three years, we, we in the industry call them the second generation. Uh, they, they are not especially made for foundation installation. 
I think they are more made for turbine installation. Mm. And, and one of the reasons is that we as installation companies, we, we can't see how the foundations look like. So, yeah. it's, it, it, so I think we will see a movement of different vessels which are specialized mm. different kind of foundations. And then, then you will see, uh, hopefully, a more efficient installation of these foundations because you link the foundation installation vessel and method you are using. Mm. We uh, are at the moment, uh, of course, working on our round three project, East Anglia. And uh, talking about the foundations, uh, we are looking into more options. Uh, we haven't decided at the moment uh, what uh, specific type of foundation to use. And of course, by then, we have not decided uh, which uh, vessel uh, to use also. And I think it's, uh, I totally agree that it's, it's going to be interesting the next uh, following years to see which, uh, do we have the vessels, uh, do we have the installation vessels uh, needed for the tasks, the jobs, yeah. the type of foundations we will uh, construct from about uh, 2015. Do we have these uh, vessels in the market at the moment? Or are they to be built uh, later on yeah. here yeah. the next uh, couple of years? I think if you look at the vessels in the market, we already have quite a lot of installation vessels. And uh, according to what I have uh, at least uh, read, and I'm sure you know more details about it, then in the next uh, two years, there will actually come quite a lot of uh, more installation vessels yeah. uh, in the market. And I think that uh, one of the challenges will actually be, as you just said, are these vessels built for the need, the purpose, the requirements we will have in, in three, four years at time from now? I think that's going to be very interesting to see. Yeah, definitely. I, 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 I agree. And, uh, and and there will even be that uh, could, could, could systems, uh, ideas be developed so we could install a part of it from a floating vessel mm. instead of having uh, legs on all the vessels. Mm. Those vessels which are coming into the market now, uh, and I agree it's about uh, 10, 12 vessels, they are all more or less the same size. They could have a bit of chains and lengths with mm. um, the, the crane. Uh, some can lift a bit more and less, but but they, they are more or less the same. And, and, um, and they they are not ideal of in transporting um, something which have a big volume. Mm. You can say, yes, they, they, they transport plates and towers and nacelles, but, but to transport jackets, mm. that's just volume. Yeah. And, 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 and that's just, you have to have big space on the deck to do that. Oh, yeah. and, and I think that's where we will probably see the limitations. Mm. And... Uh, yeah, we are working on ideas with floating together with a Norwegian company, and we'll see if that, that is one way forward. We are trying it, and we see other companies trying other uh, ideas for the market, and I think that's good because we, we simply need to to invest, and we need to find out new ways to, to install. New vessels uh, is typically also larger vessels uh, compared to the vessels mm -hmm. we have today, and uh, by then, again, uh, more expensive uh, vessels. In one way, it's, uh, it, it's, it's again a new challenge, uh, but if these vessels uh, can be used uh, more effective and uh, they can do the job, uh, meaning the installation of the unit, it could be the turbine, could be uh, the foundation, in basically shorter time and, uh, and also be, uh, make better use of uh, the available uh, weather windows. And uh, then in total, if you look at a, a year period, then you can uh, have a higher efficiency of the vessel. Then I think it's okay that uh, the costs are actually going up uh, for the vessels. It's all about what is the cost of the specific uh, unit. Yeah, and what, what, what is the installation cost per megawatt? Yeah. Uh, can we get that down then? Yeah. Then you produce <laughs> it more efficient and, and cheaper than you did before. I, 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 I'm, I'm pretty sure that, that the vessels which are coming into the market, especially on the, found, uh, on the uh, sorry, turbine installation, they, they will be uh, a lot more efficient as, as what we have seen. First of all, they carry more, mm. but, but you are able, due to the, the, the bigger projects and having more projects coming the year after and the year after if you took one of as an example your round three mm. you you will do it over six to eight years perhaps mm. 
so you want to install turbines every year over yeah. six to eight yeah. years. That means you can use the same vessel for the same installation, yeah. and and that means you can optimize your sea fasting, your loading, your harbor. Your there's a lot of things you are able to optimize if you just could. Uh, before we we install thirty turbines and then could buy and we yeah. come next year and yeah. install thirty turbines yeah. more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now we really have to install several hundred turbines. Yeah, exactly. So so that will give a difference. Yeah. Definitely. And that uh, that that also uh, you know make the difference from what we did at again as an example Ormond where we had uh, two turbines uh, per load out and that of course does not work when we have to do our round uh, three project where we maybe have to install two hundred plus uh, turbines uh, per year yeah. because exactly as you said that means that our vessels will be constantly doing the same. And uh, by then, hopefully, we can do it more efficient than uh, yeah. we do it today. I think uh, our industry has a very exciting uh, future. And uh, I'm pretty convinced that uh, we will see a lot of offshore wind farms uh, within the next uh, years constructed in, in European water and also outside Europe, of course. And uh, based on, on all the experience uh, we have in the industry today, it's, it's, it is uh, pretty often mentioned that uh, the wind industry offshore is a young industry and so on. Yes, it is in some degrees, but we have done offshore projects uh, since uh, 2000. So we actually have a lot of uh, experience. And if we make uh, good use of that, and we will in uh, the future, using the right people, the right uh, suppliers, then we have a big uh, future in front of us. I'm convinced about that. Yeah, and you, you, you're coming from a, a utility and have a utility background. Uh, I, I still remember four or five years back we were saying one of the arguments for this green energy was that the utilities, they knew what the cost price was the next 20 years when they first had produced or installed the wind farm mm -hmm. and they, could ex they, they had some experience on the O&M cost. Then they knew that, that that was the cost price. That you don't know for the production of oil because the oil prices go up and down. Correct. Gas a little bit the same. Mm. Coal mm. probably not that popular and, 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 and nuclear is, is, is also uh, challenging. Yes. So, so wind power and produce power plants of offshore wind uh, could give a more stable and, and, and known cost price. It will, and uh, at the same time, when we uh, manage to uh, reduce uh, risks in uh, what we are doing uh, offshore, it will attract even more investors, because uh, looking at the plans for the future, then uh, we really need a lot of uh, cash uh, to finance all the projects in the pipeline, not only within Vattenfall's pipeline, but in general here in Europe. I think also that when we talk of of uh, the, the, the challenges in this industry. We have talked of deep water, we have talked of, of, uh, of the challenges of installing the turbines, but, but we agree that one of the challenges is to get the money. It is. And, and the utilities probably even don't have enough. The banks at the moment don't have any, or they at least uh, won't lend you as much as they did before. So, so uh, I hope this industry could be that stable, a show that it can be done, that we have control, so we can get some of the pension funds to, to, to invest in, in this industry. We have seen one or two examples. And, and, and that's where the, where, where the big money is to, to, to invest for long-term uh, stable uh, payback. And the best way to prove that uh, we are in control of this situation is actually to deliver the projects uh, as they are expected to be delivered and uh, learn of each, uh, the, you know, the experience we have. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. That is to show that we can make a, a, a wind farm at a better price and, and when we have said it costs X, that's what it ends up costing. Yeah. Yeah.